Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar. We are right on time here, so we're gonna go ahead and get started today. So first, I just want to welcome you to today's webinar hosted by Travify Academy with our amazing guest, Marcelo Gumaris from Discover Scan uh, Scandinavia Tours. So we're super excited, um, but really quick, before I introduce Marcelo here, I do wanna just quickly introduce myself. Uh, my mm -hmm. name is Stephanie Grice, and I'm the Senior Client Champion here at Travify and also the education coordinator as well. Um, so I'm really excited to um, introduce our guests and jump into our presentation, but to just give you a quick plug kind of on what to expect with Travify Academy, if this is your first time joining us, um, really what Travify Academy is, is we partner with experts from across the travel industry to provide these free educational webinars um, through Travify Academy. So these webinars are not commercial in nature to promote these organizations, nor does Travify ever accept compensation for these partnerships um, as well. So Travify Academy truly just exists to provide powerful educational experiences uh, to really fulfill our mission to power the success of travel professionals. So these webinars like this one today, um, we're not gonna walk you through the software of Travify. We're not even gonna talk about it today. We're actually going to focus on the travel industry and talk about how to excel your travel business. And in this case, with offering more destination information for your clients to Scandinavia. So our hope really for Travify Academy is just to become a resource for travel advisors from a wide range of perspectives and different experience levels, um, just like you're going to find here today. Um, so I do want to mention here also with uh, just some webinar housekeeping tips is that there is a question box. So if you have a question throughout this presentation, um, ask it in there. I'm going to be watching those and gathering them because we will have time at the end to answer um, questions. So go ahead and ask those in there. Um, another really important thing to note is this webinar is being recorded. So if you need to hop off, you get a client call, no worries. After this, you're going to get a recording link um, in an email. And then we're also going to post it on our website at academy.travify.com. So if there's anybody that, you know, colleagues that you want to share this with, you can do that after this as well. So the moment we've all been waiting for, um, I want to introduce our guest really quick. So Marcelo uh, Gumaris is a native of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, who visited the five Yes, which is a, you you probably didn't see that one coming, I bet. Um, visited the five Nordic capitals for the first time in 2011 and fell in love with the amazing sights, tastes, and sounds and all else, which is characteristic of Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Finland. Uh, he became deeply fascinated with the culture, the people, and their way of life in those countries. In fact, the experience was so rich and fun that the seed for Discover Scandinavia Tours was then planted. Um, so Marcelo came back home with a vision to showcase the wonders of Scandinavia to North American travelers and eventually travelers from all corners of the world. So consequently, in 2013, Marcelo switched um, a 20 year career in science and engineering for the pursuit of his dream working tire tirelessly and very different, very different um, industry there, um, working very tire tirelessly and grabbing on to his vision in order to build what is now Discover Scandinavia Tours. So when he's not attempting to be the most Nordic Brazilian around by immersing himself in all things Scandinavian, uh, Marcelo likes to spend time enjoying some of his other passions, which is music, martial arts, exercising, reading, mathematics, and his beautiful family, Amy, who's his wife and business companion as well, um, wonderful little Luciana, and awesome twins, Ben and Emily. So you have your hands full, so we are very helpful, or very, very thankful for you to join us here today, Marcelo. <laughs> Thank you, Stefan. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing that Marcelo and I wanted to do before we dive into his presentation is we want to get a feel for all of the attendees today on if you have visited Scandinavian countries before. So I'm going to launch a poll here and go ahead and select the following if you have visited any Scandinavian countries before. Um, so I'm, we're really curious to see, you know, what we're, what, how many of you are familiar with Scandinavia, and then we're also going to see how many of you have sent clients to Scandinavia as well. So it looks like, let's see here, we have still collecting, 
So it looks should like I the majority. Should I click the poll five hundred times, Stephanie? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. You definitely. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say, have you been? How many times do you think you've been there, Marcelo? Um, uh, twelve times, perhaps. Nice. Uh, uh, twelve to fifteen times, something like that. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. So it looks like so. You, you have a lot of people beaten here, but there is still, so I just closed the poll, but 29% have been there. And that's not probably not including you, so you add some more to that. But then 71% have not. So it looks mm -hmm. like there's a lot of room, a lot of education that's going to be happening here today. Um, so we have one more here. So now we're curious, how many of you have actually sent clients to Scandinavian countries before? So let's see here. Oh, it looks like there's, it's actually really pretty. So it looks like so far 59% have and oh, wow. 41 knows. So it's, it's, yeah, it looks like it's pretty half and half actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and close that poll. So it looks like we're dealing with a little bit of over half have sent, but mm -hmm. not as many have been, which is very interesting. So that's cool. That's cool to know. So with that, I know that we have so much to learn now. So Marcelo, I'm gonna just hand it off to you now. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So uh, again, thanks Stephanie. Thanks everybody out there watching. Um, I wanted to, you know, I tried putting this together and. Uh, trying to think of the, the important things to share with everybody watching today. And uh, let's see, I, I need to get myself out of the way uh, so I can see my own presentation. Okay, here we go. So I thought I would start at the very beginning um, with the concept of, you know, what is Scandinavia? Um, it seems like a pretty obvious question, but when I started uh, working, uh, in, in this in this field, there, you know, I started noticing the distinction between you know Scandinavia. People talk about Northern Europe, the Nordic countries. So I'm not a scholar. Uh, if there is a scholar out there, I apologize in advance. Uh, but in general, when people are talking about uh, Scandinavia, you know, we're talking about Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, and Iceland. You know, of course, we also have Greenland and the Faroe Islands. Um, we here at Discover Scandinavia Tours, we do not work with uh, Greenland and the Faroe Islands yet. Uh, perhaps, you know, it's, it's something on the horizon, but not just now. Uh, we just focus on the other uh, five countries, the, the, the first five that I listed there. And uh, in fact, if you look at the flag, if I'm not mistaken, for the Faroe Islands, you will also see the, the Scandinavian cross that you see on the on the five flags on the picture in the slide so this is something to keep in mind and, and they're all long words you know so that's that's one difficulty but i when i'm communicating with clients or uh or prospects i you know i i use those terms uh i jump from from term to term uh without being too concerned about it so as a as an initial point you know why should anyone visit uh, Scandinavia. So when thinking about this question, I, I actually started remembering my first trip to, to Scandinavia. I visited the, the five capitals uh, traveling with a friend of mine. And I really, I came back, uh, at the time I was not in the industry, but I came back from, from Scandinavia thinking, what a, an amazing set of countries, you know, and come back, I came back thinking, Anyone who loves to travel should visit those five countries. Anyone who has a passion for exploring the world and traveling should come here. So this was is a really was a really strong experience to me. And thinking about that trip and and all my subsequent returns, I came up with this list of of bullet points here. Uh, the countries are very clean. They're highly organized, and they're very safe countries period you know to uh from my perspective scandinavians are all about high quality of life and 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 they do things so that it's almost like the, the common goal for everything is to increase quality of life which makes sense uh when it comes to touring cities uh, even the capitals tend to be you know they're on the smaller side which makes 
sightseeing um, easier, you know, more efficient, if you will. Uh, lots of nature, it's really big up there. Uh, lots of different kinds of natural landscapes. Uh, the people are very friendly in general and uh, very forward thinking, avant-garde, you know, in the way of, of thinking about life. Um, that was something that I found to be really impressive. I think perhaps the, the finish are a little more on the dry side and I'm not, uh, this is not even, the finish told me that. So, <laughs> uh, but in general, everybody's really friendly. Um, when it comes to communication, I don't know how they do it, but it's really impressive. Everyone speaks English and they don't just speak English, they speak English well. Uh, of course, as you're moving away from the bigger cities, the capitals and some of the other bigger cities into the smaller villages, of course that picture starts to change, but um, in general, I would say the communication is not a problem. Uh, so I found that to be something really attractive too. Um, when it comes to food, there's something called the Neo Nordic Movement, which has been happening uh, for a number of years now. Basically, I think it was a decision to, you know, food wasn't um, the top selling point, let's put it that way, in Scandinavia. And they decided to change that. And um, uh, there's a lot happening. The idea is to take what's, what's natural there, you know, uh, in terms of food and make it uh, exceptional. Uh, in fact, there's a restaurant in Copenhagen called Noma, which has been voted for several years, uh, not necessarily in a row, but uh, on several years, it's been voted the best restaurant in the world, period, uh, which made a lot of uh, French chefs and restaurants not happy, but that's life. Um, lots of multi-Michelin star restaurants, so uh, food is a big deal there. And there's a lot of experiences which are unique to those countries. I say unique with quotation marks because it's not that you won't find those things elsewhere, but uh, there's not many places where you find them, you know, uh, or where we'll be able, you will be able to enjoy them, such as the Northern Lights uh, and the Midnight Sun. You have to be pretty high, pretty up north to be able to enjoy those things. So I guess that's the, the general idea. So then, you know, I, I try to break down, the, you know, thinking of what will you experience when you travel to Scandinavia. And I broke it down into this first group here, you know, Denmark, Sweden and Finland. Now, these countries have a lot in common, but they're separate different countries. You know, a lot of there's a lot of history, which is uh, common for a lot of uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, a lot of cultural aspects which are similar, but uh, but they're completely different countries and, and experiences. But you know, some highlights uh, when you think of Denmark, Sweden, and Finland. Lots of castles and palaces. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've been developing for a little while a, a tour that we're probably going to call something like a castle tour of uh, Sweden and Denmark where the idea is for people to travel and not only visit some of these, these castles, but actually stay in some of them as they travel. Uh, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, nature, huge, lots of really cool and beautiful natural landscapes. Uh, the capitals, very hip, very, just very cool, clean, um, um, a place where, you know, uh, places where new ideas are welcome and people are always changing things and, mod and making things more modern. And, and uh, of course, design is a big thing in Scandinavia, too. Um, ice hotels and Northern Lights, I'm, you know, Northern Lights is a common theme. Uh, in, the, in the north of Norway, Sweden and Finland, you have what's in the region that's called uh, um, uh, Lapland which, uh, you know, you have those ice hotels and, and uh, you can go dog sledding, you can go, there's reindeer sledding, you can you cross the Arctic Circle, you visit Santa Claus, you know, a number of activities that are typical of that region. Uh, the Sami are the, the indigenous people of that region, so the Sami culture is fascinating and, um, again, a, a, a big attraction of the region. Uh, design, 
cuisine, like I just mentioned. And of course, you can't talk about Scandinavia uh, without mentioning Viking history. Um, big component of their history, their past. Uh, by the way, uh, we see, we think of Viking hats and we think of the horns. Uh, I think it's been proven that there were no horns. That's something that I think Hollywood uh, introduced uh, later on, but uh, no horns on their, the Viking hats. I thought you would, you know, at, at the next party that you go, you can impress the guests with your knowledge, but uh, all right. So Iceland, I have a, a slide specifically for Iceland because it is, Iceland is incredibly unique. Uh, I imagine that uh, the 50 something percent of you who have sent clients to uh, Scandinavia were thinking of Iceland. Uh, it's, as we all know, very popular. It's become really popular uh, in the last so many years. Uh, the population of the country is about 330,000 people. It triples in the summertime. Um, you know, lunar landscape. I've never been to the moon, but when I first arrived in Iceland and I was driving around or being driven, I thought to myself, it feels like I am on the moon because of the terrain. And I then came to find out that several people feel the same way. And I do not know a single person who's been personally to the moon, but uh, it's just, it's a fascinating landscape. Um, uh, waterfalls, gorgeous waterfalls all over the country, especially the south, the south coast. Geothermal energy is a big deal. I believe close to 100% of the energy in the country comes from uh, geothermal sources. So, you know, we have all those spas and, and geothermal pools all around the country. Of course, the Blue Lagoon is the most famous one. Uh, they put a lot of money into marketing, but all over the country, you find those, those experiences with uh, geothermal waters. Uh, People are unbelievably friendly. I think they're probably the friendliest, in, in my humble opinion, in, in all of Scandinavia, but that's a hard question to answer. Um, the Ring Road is a road that goes around the entire country. Fascinating experience. As you're driving, the scenery changes really every five minutes. Every five minutes, you will feel like stopping the car to take pictures. It's incredible. I've done that circuit with my family uh, at the time, myself, my wife, uh, a, uh, a set of, at the time, 10 year old twins and a five month old baby. So it was awesome. One of the best vacations ever. We saw everything. Um, of course, the Northern Lights in the winter, big selling point and the Viking culture, the sagas, you can work with guides who are very, very knowledgeable about the sagas and will take you to settlements and um, really cool stuff. Okay, next, Norway. I love Norway. I am deeply fascinated by the country. Love the people, love the scenery, uh, love the way of life. I could talk about Norway forever. Uh, Stephanie, if I am talking about it forever, stop me, please. Uh, of course, the major selling point is the fjords. Uh, you have fjords all over the country. Um, I'm finding the, the trailing end of a cold, so forgive me. Uh, I do not agree with those who say that once you've seen a fjord, you've seen them all. That's not the case. Uh, you know, fjords are very narrow and deep bodies of water, uh, usually you know, in between mountains. Uh, and people will tell you that, that, you know, that they are as deep as the mountains surrounding them are tall, which is pretty cool. Um, you will see stuff like what you're seeing on that picture on the slide. Just, I've, I've seen it with my own eyes. It's truly breathtaking uh, beauty, something like the, you know, the Grand Canyon that you just stand there and you're in awe. Uh, Northern Lights. Great selling point in, in the Norwegian Lapland. Fauna, you know, of course, you know, uh, elk, moose, reindeer, um, fascinating stuff. Norway is a very active country. Hiking is a big part of their culture. So it's, it's a great uh, country for, they promote a lot of, you know, what we know as soft core adventure. Uh, lots of hiking, uh, whitewater rafting, canoeing, 
uh, kayaking and all that, you know, uh, climbing, rock climbing, all that great stuff. And uh, all of Scandinavia has a lot to do with water, you know, very strong maritime history, but I think that is particularly uh, true with Norway. Um, lots of maritime history components, and uh, we include a lot of that in, in our programs. So, um, in fact, Norway is such a big deal for me that we designed our first escorted tours, which will start running next year, which I'm calling them, uh, we're calling them, uh, be on a region for 10 days. Uh, uh, it sounds a little presumptuous, but the, the idea behind it is, you know, through my travels in Norway, driving around the country, studying routes, um, I just, you know, became so fascinated with it that I thought, you know, again, people need to come here and see beyond Oslo, beyond Bergen, which are wonderful places, but there's so much more to see. And I thought it would be really cool if people could come here and see those, the, see the country from the perspective of the natives, you know, where go to places where they go when they vacation in their own home. So the idea behind these experiences is, you know, very small groups, maximum of 12 passengers. Each group will have a a dedicated uh, driver and a tour director. Um, all only historic hotels, uh, uh, gourmet homemade cuisine. Um, and we have two programs, one for central Norway and one for south Norway. Uh, and the idea, you know, the, the tagline for our company is uh, the motto, we work, you discover, and that applies here too. The idea is the traveler does nothing but take pictures and enjoy. We we take care of everything. And actually we have a little, we have a catalog here, which I'm very proud of. This is our first catalog and it's about, all about the Norwegian for 10 days. So moving on. Uh, so then the question, you know, somebody who's going to scan into Scandinavia for the first time, what are some ideas for programs if you're trying to put something together uh, for them? So I thought I would share with you a little bit of our secret, which is, you know, some combinations that work really well. They have received very positive feedback from, from our uh, clients. Uh, one is a combination of the capitals. So, you know, uh, which are uh, Reykjavik, Oslo, Reykjavik, Iceland, Oslo, Norway, Stockholm, Sweden, uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, and of course, Helsinki in um, Finland. By the way, Helsinki is two hours by ferry from uh, Tallinn in Estonia. So something really popular to do is you're spending the, some time in Helsinki, you take the ferry in the morning, travel to Tallinn, spend the day there, gorgeous place too, come back at the end of the day and you got to see another country. So a combination of cap capitals, uh, another very popular combination is that can be done in about 12 to 13 days, Copenhagen, Stockholm, Oslo, and some of the, the sunny fjord region, which is in, excuse me, in central Norway. It's as you know, around, as towns around the sunny fjord, which is called the king of the fjords. It's the largest fjord in the country. Uh, beautiful area, Flam, Balestrand, Voss, and other amazing places. Uh, in Iceland, you have you know a popular popular tour that you can do in about a week would be to uh, the Reykjavik Peninsula, you know, Reykjavik and vicinities, and you can go to the south uh, and or the north, you know, visit Akureyri, which is the second largest city in the country uh, near Lake Mivatn, uh, another gorgeous geothermal area, again, moon stuff. Um, in Iceland, another popular program, like I mentioned before, is a self-drive around the country. I recommend no less than, than 10 days, really, to really enjoy that. People try to do it in eight days or fewer. It's possible, but I think it could be a little rushed. And in the wintertime, you know, you have, of course, you know, the Norwegian Lapland, the Finnish Lapland, uh, good alternatives. Uh, also, uh, an Iceland Icelandic winter uh, vacation is a great thing to do. Uh, it's a completely different experience from what you would do in the summertime. 
And so those are my ideas for people traveling to the region, uh, traveling to the region for the first time. And finally, I had some some points here uh, that I think it's important for for you guys to keep in mind when you're selling Scandinavia. The very first one, uh, which took me a little while to become comfortable with, is Scandinavia is expensive. I think it's probably safe to say that it's the most expensive region in Europe, perhaps, um, or one of them. But then I came to see it as an opportunity that's not a problem. That, mean, that means people who are traveling there, they have money to spend. So that's a good thing. Uh, but it is expensive. Food is expensive. Everything's expensive. So to try to make it inexpensive, you're, you know, you're fighting a battle that uh, you may not be able to, to win. And you may end up sacrificing quality uh, to try to reduce prices too much. Uh, transportation uh, works really well. That means you can travel, you know, multi countries without necessarily having to drive, uh, which is what the vast majority of our clients do. We use trains, we use ferries, boats, um, and of course flights. Uh, flights within between any two locations in Scandinavia are generally no longer than an hour and a half. Um, so that's 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 a really powerful thing too. Uh, now, when you're composing itineraries, they can get complex very quickly. So it's something to keep in mind, especially when the client wants to visit some of the more remote areas. Um, careful, because it can get tricky um, and you may start putting a lot of hours into something that, you know, of course it's many times you don't quite know if you're gonna sell it or not, right? We, we've all been there. Um, each country works with a different currency. Um, we have the Krona, you know, the Norwegian, Swedish, Danish, and Icelandic Krona. They're all different currencies. And in Finland, they use the Euro. So that's another degree of complexity. Um, holidays, they are serious about their holidays, as in no one works. <laughs> Countries shut down. Uh, especially when it comes to Christmas and Easter. It's actually a, a week long event uh, or, or, or you know, a week long thing. So my advice is plan in uh, plan ahead. Um, um, you know, don't expect much communication to happen during those holidays. Um, I'm getting a message here saying that my connection is not great. So, um, so keep that in mind. Information can be a little tricky in the sense that, you know, some of our suppliers, some of our smaller company suppliers that do tours in, you know, in the more distant corners of the land, uh, their websites are all in their native language. They're not in English. So something else to, to keep in mind, you know. Um, and finally, it's, it's a very popular destination now, especially in the summer. So book early, book early, book early. I, I stress this to our clients, you know, uh, it affects prices, it affects availability, it affects everything. Again, something that I'm certain that you're, you're not, uh, that, that, that's not new to you. So I suppose that that concludes my, my presentation, Stephanie and, and everybody, and I would love to uh, answer any questions. And just to, to actually to, to finish this topic, we do work with uh, outside agents uh, and, you know, we have a, a program for that. And if you're interested in, in working with us, uh, I'd love to hear from you. So just, you know, drop me an email and, and we'll talk. So done. Awesome. That was great. And yeah, no, there was um, no problem to connection either. It was, it was good. Um, yeah, that was great. We had um, a lot of really great uh, questions come in. Karen just said, wow, great presentation. Thank you. Um, really Thank awesome you. stuff. Um, so we did have some questions come in um, towards the beginning. So the first question I have for you is from Peggy. And she said, what is the best time to go to the ICE hotels? <laughs> The ice hotels, um, of course, the winter time. Uh, although you know some of the, I say the ice hotels because there's multiple ice hotels. Some are called snow hotels. Some are called ice hotels. There's you know, um, 
it used to be just the, the the one in Kiruna in Sweden, you know, the ice hotel in the nor in northern Sweden. Uh, but now there's multiple uh, properties, and um, of course it's it's a winter thing. Some of them are not open throughout the year. But I think uh, starting like on December first through end of March, I would say it's the best time. Uh, Especially because there's a lot of those, a lot of ice hotels that, or I think most ice hotels, they really only start uh, their activities in December. They they start receiving guests prior to December, if I'm not mistaken. But some of the activities like dog sledding and so on really just happen. Uh, they start happening in December. So I'd say prime time is December through March. Perfect. Um, another question here, Vicky asked, um, are these countries LGBTQ friendly? Very much so, very much so. They're people friendly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, very, just, you know, uh, lots of activities. Um, of course, the, the pride parades are a big deal in those countries. And uh, I think it goes hand in hand with the uh, forward thinking, just, you know, just open, open-minded uh, kind of, philosophy and and but short answer to the question is yes lots to do and and so on great and she also has to are these countries um slash tours accessible friendly but i think what she was referring to is like wheelchair accessible that's a great question um this is something that we are actually um looking into more now this is something i've been personally studying uh in terms of the options the countries themselves Yes, they are. They are prepared uh, for uh, people with disabilities and and so on. You know, uh, the hotels and 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 etc. The infrastructure is there, uh, but of course, uh, you know, you still uh, you as the, the travel advisor, you need to to make sure that whatever the the location isn't covering that you cover. But in general, the answer is yes to the question. Right. And um, so we have another question here from Scott. So would you suggest exploring Scandinavia via ship or uh, la are the land tours preferred? And he also mentioned, I don't mean mass market cruise lines. I mean the expedition lines like Hurtigruten companies whose focus is the destination, not really on their own ships. Another great question. Thanks for the question, Scott. Um, I personally think that the way to really see it is with land packages. Uh, Having said that, um, I do open exceptions, Hurligruten being one of them. So Hurligruten actually used to be uh, not a, a passenger cruise line at all. It was just for, you know, it was, uh, they would deliver goods and, and uh, mail across the, the coast of Norway. Uh, it's really fascinating uh, kind of history. But then they realized that, wait a second, we can take people too and, you know, uh, increase our, our market. So we do work with Hurligruten for cruises along the coast of Norway, port to port, and all the way from Bergen to the north, to uh, Kirkenes in the north. Uh, and uh, so, but, but, so in summary, you know, that's what we use. We use also, you know, um, the overnight ferry, which is not really a, a cruise, but it's a, the overnight ferry that connects Oslo to Copenhagen is an excellent way to travel between the two capitals. Uh, it's really a cool experience. Uh, and of course, the, the fjord cruises, uh, which are generally uh, not overnight cruises. So that's what, you know, what I would res restrict the experiences to when it comes to, uh, to cruises. But I think that the best way to do it is really to get off the boat and 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 go into the country side and, and see it. So it also sounds like we need to plan multiple trips to Scandinavia. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say the one thing that we need to. It sounds like we just need to um, do multiple trips to Scandinavia because there's so many different ways to see it, so many things to see. So that's, that's, absolutely, that's absolutely true. Of course, you know, people have limitations in a, in a lot of our clients. They they think of Scandinavia as a place to go once and, and cross off the mm -hmm. list. Um, it is what it is. You know, of course, I I recommend multiple trips. But if nothing else, if uh, if you can separate like Iceland and, um, and do Iceland by itself, 
and then you know uh let's call it mainland you know the other four countries on a separate trip even that uh is already highly adventurous uh, advantageous rather um if you can then break it down and just do you know iceland on one trip and norway and you know and sweden and on separate trips there is no shortage of things to see if you can just if you can move away from the capitals and see more of the country really you will gain uh, a perspective that very few people i think have um, awesome yeah so lots of different ways to do that and one question too uh from anna is uh regarding uh discover scandinavia tours so um do you work with travel agents who send clients to the bia norwegian escorted tours yes we do Yes, we do. We have a commission plan for that as well, and I'll, I'll be happy to share uh, details uh, with, with Anna or anyone else. Perfect. Um, and that'll also be included to um, just to mention this, that'll be included in the email that comes after this, and then um, we'll have it on our website so anybody can check that out too. Um, another question here from Irma. Um, she just mentioned worried about daylight time and day. So I think coming from that is, you know, there's the daylight is a little bit different depending on the time of year, correct? So how do you get around that or how do you plan around that? Good question too. Uh, well, so, you know, it, it varies tremendously, right? I mean, if you go in the sun, in the summertime, it's daylight forever, all day long, right? Uh, in fact, that's what the if you travel to the north of the of Scandinavia, excuse me, that's the whole midnight sun idea. It never sets. It gets to the horizon and then it starts going right back up. So you have a ton of. Uh, daylight in the winter of course it's the it's the reverse uh situation uh, generally you know if you plan on having around four hours of daylight you know um but it's just a very different ex it's just a very different experience um, um i'm gonna connect my computer my battery oh, yeah, no problem informed and i don't want to run out of battery so <laughs> Okay. And everyone too, keep your uh, questions coming in too, um, if you have any more. So, but then again, you know, in the winter time when you don't have as much uh, daylight, uh, you know, then you're doing the Northern Lights tours in the evening, which is an evening thing to do. Uh, you know, for instance, in Iceland, you know, it's not uncommon for us to send our clients to the Blue Lagoon in the evening. Um, so it's just rebalancing the activities based on uh, how much daylight you need for that particular activity and how much you have. Yeah, it's it's so unique. It's a unique place to travel where that is something that you might have to look for. But in the summertime, that's awesome. You have a really long day, um, really cool. And um, another question here from Mary is, um, do, would you say that Northern Lights are better by ship or land? And she um, clarified too that by ship, she meant as in small, not a large ship. Yeah, I think by land, the reason for that being, you know, for instance, with the, the suppliers that, well, there's a number, there's a few factors that you need to see the Northern Lights, right? You need solar activity, and that's pretty much happening throughout the year. Um, this, you know, you need to be far north um, enough to see them. Um, you need dark skies, which is why you only see them in the winter, because, you know, in, in the in the summertime, there's too much light. It competes against uh, the northern lights. Uh, but you need the toughest one is you need clear skies. That's that's just like you can't see the moon. You know you can't see the northern lights if it's cloudy. So when you're uh, in land, uh, if you're working with a good tour operator, a local tour operator, uh, they will dry. They have the equipment to 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 guide them to know where the lights can be seen, and they will drive around to the best locations so you know there's more flexibility um uh, I, I assume i haven't seen them from from a ship but i assume them that i assume that if the ship is where the ship is right and if it's cloudy uh, uh in that location then you don't have much of a choice but uh, uh you have this other uh, plan um when you're on a land package. Uh, one other thing that we do that I recommend is we never just, well, seldom do we just schedule, schedule one Northern Lights tour uh, for any given program. Uh, we generally schedule multiple ones, different ones, 
so that if one of them doesn't work, you know, they so they have multiple chances of of actually experiencing uh, the lights, which is another mind blowing uh, phenomenon. You just like stare at them, not believing what you're seeing. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a great tip too on there. So I have a final question for you and it's going to be a big question. So however you want to answer it is what would you say for somebody who is wanting to go to Scandinavia? So it sounds like um, you would like Norway because you really like Norway. So maybe you would say that or the Northern Lights. But if they had to choose one, they had 10 days you know, to choose one place and what are the top things that as a travel agent, they should recommend to just sell that place that always, you know, from all the travelers you've sent to Scandinavia, what do they always come back? And they're just like, that was incredible. That was, I, you know, they might not have been expecting that or what you would recommend them doing. Yeah, that, that is a tough question. question. Uh, yeah, sorry. You know, <laughs> no, no, that's, that, I love the question, it's great. Um, it, you know, it doesn't, it, you don't have to restrict yourself just to, uh, uh, if you have 10 days, uh, you can easily spend those days in, in, in Norway, you know. Uh, and I think that the, the, the heart of that, of that question is balance. And by balance, I mean a balance of cities and uh, nature, you know. You can go to um, in 10 days, you can see Oslo, you can see Bergen, you can go to Ålesund, which is, uh, I think, Bergen used to be my favorite town in Norway. I think it's fighting against Ålesund now. Ålesund is incredibly beautiful. Um, and you can, in that, in traveling from Oslo to Ålesund, you can also see some of the fjord region uh, that I was mentioning before, the sunny fjord region, and stay in a town or two in between uh, Oslo and Bergen, for instance. Uh, and that easily consumes uh, 10 days. It allows you to travel at a, at a very leisurely pace. Uh, you get to see the cities. You get to stay in the heart of nature. Um, you do some rib boat tours. You do some bike tours of the capitals. Excuse me. You can do some food tours. Uh, you can have an overnight cruise there from you know Bergen to Ålesund. So it's the type of that's the type of vacation that uh, generally you know if if you know what you're doing, generally people come back saying, "Wow, I'm blown away." So, uh, but then again, I get the same feedback when people spend you know a few days in Copenhagen, a few days in Stockholm and a few days in Oslo, just in the capitals, you know, because it's it's so different. Uh, so, so there's my not so great answer, I think, because I just love it all there, so. Uh, no, it's for, that's, well, it's good, it's, it's. All this stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, it's perfect, well, and that is why we have you. That's why it's so nice, and it's really exciting, you know, you can't go wrong with any of those countries. And I, I definitely lied that that was the last question, because we had a couple come in. Um, and uh, so one question that someone uh, mentioned when you were mentioning the Northern Lights. So Daniela asked if you have multiple times scheduled to see the Northern Lights, but you end up seeing it on your first day scheduled, do you still go the other days or do you usually fill that with something else? Um, the, what we do is generally the tours, uh, yes, they're, they include seeing the Northern Lights, but they're different tours. I'll give an example, uh, so meaning they're still worth doing even if you already saw the lights on, on the first day. Uh, not to mention that sometimes you, you see them, but you know it's the, the intensity is, is is not the greatest. Uh, you know, uh, and then you you may still want to go back and try them again a second time. But uh, it's not uncommon that we will do something like on one day uh, we will do a, a tour, a Northern Lights tour on snowmobile. Uh, the following the on the following tour it will be uh, dog sledding out in the open, you know, and seeing the Northern Lights. So we make the activities different, and, and you can do the same thing in Iceland. Um, we make the activities different enough so that the Northern Lights is not the only attraction, which also works great if you actually don't see them, uh, which, by the way, never ever promise that people will see them. You know, we, 
we've been doing this for a while and we have we work with really good guys and really good companies we know them well uh and the the rate of success is high but it's not 100 percent. so promising that would be a mistake interesting so that's another really good tip then is just to make mm -hmm. sure that it is you know possible and i think you mentioned this earlier but is there certain times of the year that makes it easier to see the northern lights uh, actually that, that is the number one question we receive what the, it is what is the best time of the year to see the northern lights uh and what happens is like i said you need dark skies right so they're generally visible between mid-september and uh end of march some suppliers uh or I, I keep saying suppliers some tour uh local tour providers they extend their tours through april i very seldom i will book something uh, or include a northern lights tour past march 31st on on a client's program but so if you're between mid-september and end of march that's when you have the best chances of seeing other than that there really isn't uh, a best time of course you know in september october you have the advantage of it not being so cold as it will be in the dead of winter you know in december january um january february you tend to get a little more rain in iceland i don't really know if that's a, a rule i think that's my experience and that of my clients i can't say that that always happens um in december december is very popular but of course you if you want to travel during the holidays um you're going to pay more it's you know those vacations those are very popular times uh even they can be more popular than summertime even uh, so but in short there really isn't a best time if you're just thinking of northern lights within this interval that i gave you um, what ends up determining the best time is some other factor. Got it. Okay. That's good to know. And um, another question here is, and, and this is probably depending on the country and maybe the city, um, but uh, we had a question, what do locals eat? Is the street food, is there street food? Does it exist? So not really like Michelin star kind of places, but just more, um, yeah, just more like street food, I guess. Um, yeah, lots of it. Um, but uh, you know, in, in Denmark, you have these, um, they call it, I mean, I won't even try to pronounce it in in Danish in case there's someone here who speaks Danish and just die laughing. But they have these open sandwiches, you know, uh, which uh, are very popular in in Denmark. And I, I you know, and of course, in Sweden, you have the meatballs and, uh, but, uh, you know, in, I guess, in, in short, every country has its, um, specialty, it's it's street food or, or uh, uh, fairly inexpensive places where you can have some lunch, you know, um, inexpensive in by Scandinavian standards. Um, you know, in Norway, they have the, you know, one thing that I absolutely love, they have this uh, brown goat cheese, uh, and they you can you can buy that with uh, waffles, warm waffles and, and jam and that brown goat cheese. That stuff is amazing. So there's lots of things to try like that. And, and uh, you know, all of our hotels, when we book hotels for our clients, they include breakfast. So people have a, you know, a strong back breakfast before leaving the hotel to spend the day sightseeing and then generally a light lunch and some dinner or, or the other way around. Well, I hope I answered the question. Yeah, no, no, just made me really hungry, and I'm sure everybody else too. That sounds awesome. I feel the same um, as I'm talking about this, I'm like salivating. <laughs> you're gonna hear my stomach growling through this microphone. Um, uh, one other question. So this is a good one for a lot of. Um, you know, travel agents selling to the sports, you know, big uh, travelers who want to see sports. Um, so Maria asked, is there access to, so the Swedish Hockey League or the Finnish Elite League, do a lot of travelers go to those? Are those easy tickets to get? Have you ever sent travelers to those or is that not something that a lot of travelers put on their their itinerary? Hmm, that's, that's actually, I'm not sure I know the answer to that question. Um, it's not something that has come up uh, from our travelers. Mm. 
my my guess would be that it wouldn't be too difficult to i mean i don't know how popular they are but if it's just a matter of purchasing tickets uh that's purchasing tickets to anything there tends to be very simple um so we really haven't had that many you know clients wanting to attend specific sports events uh we got a lot of people you know who who are interested in their heritage you know they have uh uh, Norwegian or Swedish uh, heritage, and they want to explore that, but not really uh, sports related. So I guess I can't can't really help much there. Yeah, um, and another question came in here too, and we'll. Um... This was, I think this came up through talking about the food and we were talking just kind of about Scandinavia is a more expensive uh, place to visit. So can you give an example of a cost of a meal? Hmm. Um, Yes, I can. Um, well, you know, it's not um, it's it's not absurd to pay twenty five dollars for, say, a hamburger. You know, a, a good quality cheeseburger. Uh, um, I mean, the cost. You know, that changes so much. That varies so much. But uh, I, I guess. Uh, um, if you if you budget, you know, I, again, it, it depends a lot on the experience. And uh, we work mostly with, you know, most of our uh, packages are more on the high end side. So, you know, I recommend uh, around a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars per person per day for meals. Um, something something that neighborhood uh, again under the assumption that, you know, people already eat at the hotel, they eat breakfast at the hotel. Um, something else that that's a good idea to do, you know, those food tours are excellent. Uh, and, and, and basically it covers a meal, you know, when you're doing a, a food tour at lunchtime or dinner time, you really are eating the equivalent of a lunch or a dinner while um, doing some sightseeing at the same time. Perfect. That's yeah, that's really good to know. And, um, you know, factoring in all of those different moving pieces um, is really important. But other than that, it looks like we are right on time here. We're just cutting it a little early, but it's I think we have so much. And I think one of the most incredible things I learned is the Viking helmet. That there's no horns. I did not know that, actually. <laughs> no horns, yeah. Very important. <laughs> Very and, important and, fact to know. And it's actually interesting. Our logo. Um, here it is. I don't know if you can see it. We totally oh. disregarded that. I didn't know that. So, but you know, this if I guess if I had it without the, the horns, people wouldn't know what it what it meant because we think of uh, so yeah, we have the, the Viking hat, we have the mermaid, you know, in Cop in Copenhagen you have the, the little mermaid statue, and we have a, a, a moose here. So but yeah, contradicting our logo, there's no you know, but that's what we recognize. That's what everybody recognizes. And now you have to go there to learn that kind of history to know that's not that's actually not what it was. So and one final tip that I'll give uh, Stephanie is yeah. if you have a client who's been, you know, to Scandinavia in the summertime and they're wondering, you know, would it be worthwhile going back in the winter? Is it different? The answer is absolutely yes. Uh, even from that question about daylight time. Um, completely different experiences. So by all means. Perfect. That's really good to know. And um, and once again, um, everyone, you'll get an email after this. So if you do have questions that you think of later, um, feel free. You can reach out to us at academy at travify.com. Um, reach, reach out to Marcelo. Um, well, happy to help. And, and his website. So I also, Marcelo, put your website in the email so um, you know, people can come in there, check it out. Yeah. And um, But otherwise, I just want to say thanks, everyone, for joining. And thank you so much, Marcelo. This has been really good. We have a lot of people have been saying this is really helpful and they really enjoyed this presentation wonderful that's great to hear well thank you so much stephanie thank you everybody thank you. Uh, in the audience and uh we'll be here so yeah. if you have more questions just drop me an email and i'll do my best to answer them as quickly as, as i can great well thank you so much again enjoy the rest of your day thank you bye-bye everybody yeah.